Shooting good handheld B-roll. In my opinion, this is a skill every good videographer should have up their sleeves. Tripods, sliders, and gimbals are great, but in some situations, these tools can't be used, and this is where you need to rely on your handheld B-roll shooting techniques. Certain shots in certain areas to get certain looks can only be achieved by shooting handheld. If you're a little unsure about how good your handheld B-roll skills are, I'm gonna be covering my top four cinematic B-roll shots you can get with ease shooting handheld. Okay, so before we dive into these shots, I wanna cover one question, and that is why shoot handheld? With gimbals, tripods, and sliders available, you can pretty much cover any shot you want to get with one of these tools. Now I find myself nine times out of 10 shooting handheld, even though I have a great tripod, a great gimbal, I don't have a slider, but I used to shoot with one and I hated it. So shooting handheld gives you a lot more control and flexibility over your shot. Tiny little movements and adjustments to your shot can easily be made without having to start again. In my opinion, in most situations, your range of motion also increases. You can get a lot more shots in a very quick amount of time, which is something else your work workflow increases, but you can get a lot more shots in the same amount of time it would take you to get one or two shots with a gimbal or a tripod. Simply not having to set up a tool and easily being able to reset your body and hands is a breeze when you're out shooting, especially running gun stuff when you're on a bit of a time crunch. And finally, you get to keep a little bit of the natural flow in your shots. I really like the handheld look and you can usually tell when something's either shot on a gimbal, a tripod or a slider, or if it was shot handheld. There's just a little bit of wobble and motion and in my opinion, it does give a very nice cinematic feel and look if that's what you're going for. Okay, with that being said, there are times where I do use tripods and gimbals. Now tripods are pretty straightforward. If you need to lock off your shot, use a tripod. I wouldn't recommend trying to get any motion with a tripod whatsoever, as tilting that thing forward and getting some kind of consistent motion is never ideal. With that being said though, there are three key moments when I use gimbals to get my shots. So I use them when I'm covering some form of a long distance. Now this is perfect when you're getting running or walking shots as you get to eliminate the footstep wobble and shake, which usually is not nice. I also use gimbals when I need to be super smooth and my shots need to be absolutely perfect. And finally, I use gimbals when I need to get my camera in hard to reach places. Now this could be up really high or down super low. I find when I try and get a high angle shot with my hands, not only can I not hold the camera still whatsoever, but it's also always crooked. And same with really low shots. This is when a gimbal is ideal, but to be honest, I hardly find myself shooting shots like these. Okay, with that said and that now out of the way, let's move on to these four cinematic handheld B-roll shots you can use and get with ease. Okay, so first up we have the orbital pan. And this is pretty much when you want to keep your subject dead center in the middle and you want to move around it. Now you don't just want to move side to side, that would just be a panning shot. You also want to include some circular motion into your shot. So what I mean by that is let's use this microphone for example. Let's say this is just a normal pan, it's not what you're after. You want to move around the subject. So as you can see the camera is moving around the microphone and imagine you're just drawing a circle around a subject but keeping the subject in the middle of the frame. Now while I'm well aware you can easily shoot this on a gimbal, I much prefer shooting it handheld as I find I can usually get it first go and it's much easier to keep the subject in the middle of the frame when you don't have to fight the rotation of the gimbal and match the exact pace and speed the gimbal's moving at. I find myself using these shots to add a bit more of a dramatic look and feel into my video and to easily pinpoint and highlight the subject that I want my viewer to be looking at. It also incorporates a really nice moving background and I love this effect. Okay, so next up we have the reveal. I know you can easily shoot this on a gimbal as well, but for the exact same reason as I shoot the orbital pan shot with my hands, I also like to shoot reveal shots with my hands. Reveal shots are great. They work very well in any part of your video and they should be very quick and easy to get. And for that reason is exactly why I shoot them handheld. Of course, you've got all the other reasons I mentioned with the orbital panning shot, but the simple reason that I shoot these handheld is because they should be quick and easy. They're not in depth and they're not hard to get, so why would I want to make it more complicated? All you simply need to do is ideally shoot with a fairly low aperture, get nice and close to your foreground, and then have your subject or whatever you may be shooting pass the foreground and simply move your camera from behind the foreground out of the foreground and reveal your subject. This is something that should take under 10 seconds to shoot and I do not want to complicate it with a gimbal whatsoever. Just make sure you've got a rock solid stance, your arms are tucked in and you can easily move side to side. That's all you need, it's a very simple shot, don't overcomplicate it. Okay, so next up we have the push forward and the pull back. Once again, very, very simple shots and shots that any videographer should have up their sleeves and be able to confidently shoot handheld. Ideally, you can shoot this through or over some kind of foreground to add a little bit more motion and depth into your shot. 
And yes, of course, just like every other shot, you can shoot this on a gimbal, but like I've been mentioning, there's just no need to overcomplicate it. These shots are an absolute staple in your video and can be used throughout the whole thing. These shots are great to use to progress the video, and you do want to be able to make sure you can confidently shoot these handheld when you're out in the field. Okay, last but not least is the twist out motion. These are pretty fun to use. Now, this is probably not something you're gonna be using all the time, and if it is, power to you. But these are super eye-catching shots and can easily draw your viewer into your video. The idea with this shot is very similar to the push in or push out shot, except you wanna add a twisting motion into it. Now there's nothing too technical or complicated about this shot whatsoever, but it is a very, very nice way to add a little bit more spice into your video. If you're shooting at 60p or 120p, this is a very nice and simple way to be able to add suspense into your video and really draw your viewer in deeper. And they are my four most used cinematic handheld B-roll shots that I shoot out in the field. Now don't get me wrong, all of these shots are fairly basic. There's nothing special, innovative, or even wow about these shots whatsoever. But when you get really good at them, when you can dial them in and nail them every time, you're gonna be so much of a better filmmaker and you're also gonna make sure you're going home with solid handheld B-roll shots. And in my opinion, if you can shoot these anywhere at any time with any gear, you are well on your way to becoming a very solid filmmaker. And that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed today's video whatsoever, let me know down below in the comments. If you're new around here, subscribe. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.